So we are the Geodata Viz team at Ordnance Survey. Uh, I'm Paul Naylor and with me is my colleague Charlie Glynn. Good morning. Um, and today we've got a packed agenda to go through. Um, we'll be talking about Geodata Visualisation and the Geodata Viz team at Ordnance Survey. So this is what the agenda looks like today. Um, I'm going to start by talking through Geodata Viz at Ordnance Survey. I'll then talk a bit about what is Geodata Viz before moving on to the graphic design principles. And Charlie's going to take over, uh, talk through 12 practical tips to help, uh, talk about the Geodata Viz toolkit. We'll then finish with a summary before moving on to questions. So what do we do at Ordnance Survey? Um, just to kind of give you a bit of a history, we're both trained as cartographers and trained in cartographic design. Um, between us, we've got about 35 years experience. Um, the GDV team in kind of its current format has been uh, around for about a year, but in its wider format as the cartograph design team, it's been around for about 10 years. And at Ordnance Survey, um, as part of the GDV team, we help design products, we tell stories, helping our marketing PR team to help tell stories with data. Um, we obviously support our customers and partners through webinars, through um, workshops, presentations, and through practical support um, to help them with their data uh, or with anything to do with geodata visualization or cartographic design. And then we also craft bespoke maps and data visualizations. And these can be to help with like one-off marketing events or to, to, to help with stories. And we innovate, so we're always looking at new ways of visualizing geographical data, looking at new software that might help us do that, um, and, and, and talking to, to, to people about what they're doing, perhaps with ge geographic data, to see if, they, if what they're doing can help us. So I'm just going to go through some of the things, some of the projects kind of we've been involved in the Ordnance Survey. Um, this is OS Maps. So we were responsible for designing the uh, kind of first slippy map which Ordnance Survey were involved in, which is the canvas of the application and the first thing the user sees as you load the app. Um, this had to strike a balance between the detail that OS maps are renowned for with the cleaner aesthetic of modern day map design. And uh, the result is an award winning app that has been designed for the user in mind from the offset. But in the past 12 months, so sort of since we kind of became a geodata visualization team, we've become much more journalistic in our approach to data and started doing a lot more storytelling. So before we might have taken data and just gone, well, we've got a lot of geographical data, let's just take a map. But now we actually look at the data and try and tell a story with it. So we do a lot of work with our marketing and press office to tell stories using data. And we've been exploring animation techniques a lot lately, as lots of data is either real time as, or has a temporal element to it. And images you can see on screen at the moment show some representations of data that was used to support um, a story detailing where the most popular OS custom made map borders would be in place. So data is all about telling stories and finding insights. And by undertaking this data analysis, we were able to identify the one place in GB that hadn't featured on a map order. And that was a place called Fuya in the Shetlands. So that's what data visualization, data visualization can do. It can tell stories with data, but it can give you insights as well. So by running this particular data visualization, we discovered that there was actually a place in GB that hadn't had a custom map order. And then our press team were kind of able, were able to run a story and where they gave every inhabitant on that island uh, a custom-made map of that island. So we also do a lot of focus on chart and graph design um, and the ability to combine maps with our chart types to show different views of the same data. And we now work in, in three week sprints uh, and try to put some time aside within each sprint to work on something innovative whether it's a new technique or testing out new software, that helps us to stay relevant. So data visualization is the presentation of data in graphical form to help people understand it and reveal insights that might otherwise be hidden. When we refer to geodata visualization, we're talking specifically about the visualization of geodata, which is more often and more than often maps. And maps are one of many forms of data viz, and there are many ways to present this data. So what are the benefits of geodata visualization? So it's all about basically making data accessible to everyone and using that data to solve real problems or answer real questions. The power of data biz is enormous and should not be underestimated. It allows people to get to get access to that data who otherwise might not be able to. And if you can tell a compelling story with that data, it allows you to answer questions or provide solutions to complex problems. And why is it important now? Well, data is everywhere, 
and a very large proportion of that is location based. With the emergence in its popularity, it has led to the convergence and emergence of many disciplines where data is at the forefront. We see and experience data every day. It's used by sports teams to monitor and analyze their players' performances. It's used by news outlets to support a story, and it's used by businesses to analyze web traffic. And it's used by us to help us understand and navigate the world around us. So now I'm gonna talk through um, our cartographic design principles, which have probably been around for about five years now, but are still as relevant as ever, not just to cartographic design, but to, to data visualization as well. Um, and they were put together to basically promote good map design, but like I say, they're kind of as relevant to, to geodata visualization as well. So this is just a little bit about the principles. Um, the, the purpose of putting them together was to offer some, some guidelines that are relevant to map design, but um, like I said already, they are, they are equally as relevant to all forms of data visualization. But I think when you think of print, these principles, it's important to remember that they're not rules. What's important is at the end of the day, you have a map or data visualization that works well and communicates its message clearly for a pleasing user experience. So what are those eight principles? So what I'll do now, these are, the, these are them, there's eight in total, and what I'll do now is just quickly run through each of them. Um, I won't go into too much detail, but you can actually find the principles and details about each one on our website, which um, we can supply the link to if you don't already have it. So understanding the views of requirements. Um, this, is, this is pretty much as it says, it's understanding what the user wants from your map or data visualization. It's speaking to the user. And we can borrow techniques from user experience to help us gather these requirements and drill down into what's really important. And this is understanding what the user wants from your map or data visualization, what they expect and what they, want, what they should be experienced. This is the consideration of display format. So this is about deciding how your design will be served. Will it be on paper, uh, screen, web, mobile? Does it need to be responsive? Will it be static or will it be interactive? If you make sure you're aware of the considerations that need to be implemented, and then you can do this in appreciation of your chosen format. And when you're thinking about this, you need to make sure you think about things like your choice of text size, what font you're going to use, what color palettes to use is when considering these, they can all have a good or bad impact on your chosen display format. Clear visual hierarchy. So this is about making sure the most important information is obvious to the user, and anything that is there just to add context should recede into the background. This information is still there, but it's playing a supporting role. And there are different techniques that you can, you can do to, to, to do this, so that you can use to do this. Um, color, size, symbol choice, text, font, text size, etc. So simplicity is all about just keeping it simple. So it's kind of that KISS, um, the KISS uh, process that you, you, you hear about a lot. Um, look at your map or data visualization, kind of take a step back and ask yourself, is it cluttered, is it noisy? Is there anything on there that isn't adding value? If that information is not necessary to understand what your map, your map or data visualization message is, or it distracts from the user from your design intended purpose, then get rid of it. It's not need, if it's not needed, you don't need to show it, so you can remove it. Legibility. So this is all just about making sure those features that make up your map or your, debate, or your data visualization are legible. And this is things like, is your font choice uh, legible? Can people read it? Are your letters large enough to be read? Make sure your text doesn't overlap and ensure any icons you've chosen are legible and clear. Um, keeping your design's elements legible improves the user's overall experience and instills confidence in your map or data visualization. Consistency. Uh, if your visualization or map is part of a set, um, you wanna make sure that it is consistent throughout. Um, this makes sure that a connection can be easily made. So when choosing or creating your symbology, you, you wanna make sure that you, you, you're, you're choosing or designing this with the user in mind. They should only have to learn to decode the symbology once. Um, so this is, we, we always use our Ordnance Server Explorer maps as a good example of this. It's where people recognize a brand and associate um, confidence in that brand. So if, if they've used that map before, um, then they're more likely to go back to it if it's been designed properly and with the user in mind. Accessibility. Um, so this is about just basically making sure your, your map or visualization is accessible to everyone and refers to things like color vision deficiencies. 
Um, if you go online, there are some great simulators, simulators you can use to help check that any colours you've chosen are accessible to the different types of colour vision deficiency. Um, so it's just about making sure that it's easy to access and easy to use. We want to make sure that we can lower those barriers of entry to ensure that as many people as possible are able to access and experience your map and your data visualisation. So this can be about things like formats as well. So it's the kind of data that you're, you're serving your, your map or data visualisation as. You know, if it's a PDF, can everybody access that PDF? Let's think about things like that. And the last principle is good composition. So this kind of refers to the overall balance of all the individual elements that, that make up your, your map or your data visualisation. So if we were talking about a map, it would be thing like, things like the map itself, the title, the scale bar, the legend, um, any pictures that might accompany your map, timelines, just, just making sure that composition is right. Make sure all the individual features are arranged neatly and logically and that there is enough white space to make them clear and legible. And finally, it's important to make sure that the information you're, you're representing is the main focus of your map or of your data visualisation. I'm going to hand over to Charlie now. Thanks, Paul. OK, so now we're going to share some tips and best practices. So these are things that we've learned through our own experiences and we're going to share with you this morning um, in the hope they can be helpful to you too. So firstly, um, sketching. So sketching is a great way for us to get our ideas out of our head and to be able to articulate those and, and communicate and share our ideas and our thoughts easily with other people. Um, so as we're ultimately using graphical forms to portray data, it makes sense that we start with pen and paper to draw our ideas. Um, it's also really important to, to maintain a sense of discovery and always be striving to learn and learn new things. So whether that's new technologies, new softwares, new theory or new techniques. Um, so we're working in an environment that, that moves really quickly. So it's important that we, we continue to learn and, and stay relevant. So our, our team, not so Paul and myself within the Geodata Viz team, we make sure that we always put time aside um, to help us sort of play around with new techniques or learn something new. So as designers, um, colour is arguably our most powerful tool. So it's the visual variable that allows us to not only add contrast and kind of group similar features together, but it also enables us to portray emotion. And colour has the ability to make people uh, feel a certain way. So we believe that it's important to have a, at least a basic understanding of colour theory and the science behind colour, and to also consider colour accessibility um, as Paul's already mentioned previously. And then creating a clear visual hierarchy, this means that the users of our map will see the most important data first, and then anything that's there to support or, or act as contextual data kind of recedes into the background. And this can allow us to control how the user views our map and ensure that they sort of decode it and understand it efficiently. And it can really bring a focus to what is really important. Augmenting maps with charts and graphs. So this is something that we've spent quite a lot of time on over the last year or so, um, looking at how we can support our maps with additional or alternative views of that same data. Um, and thankfully, there are lots of really good tools online to help us select the most appropriate charts. So the example that we're showing on the screen here is from the Financial Times, their visual vocabulary. And this is something that we've got a, a huge poster version of this um, hung up in our, in our office. And not only is it really useful for us in our team, but we find that it's really helpful to, to get our colleagues to think visually as well and to think about how they're, they're presenting their, their information and ensuring that we do that in the most appropriate form. So we all like stories and storytelling is a really great, great way to engage our audience. Um, but also to get messages across efficiently and adding narrative to our to our charts and our maps is a really good way uh, to keep our users attention and to make make sure that they they remember that information um, so the point of data visualization is not just to plot the data in a different way but it's to use visuals to tell a story that that would otherwise be hidden um, so we need to find that story um, within the data and then and then tell it so one of the best tools we have to achieve this is through the application of annotations. Um, so this is where we can use textual 
textual descriptions and kind of call out boxes and we can use these to guide our reader and add commentary to our graphics um, but we can also use them to call out certain aspects of the data and highlight um, the important parts so this is something that data journalists do really well um, so we often look look to them for inspiration um, and one other uh, useful thing of using annotations specifically on static images is that we can avoid using um, unnecessary interactivity. Temporal animations are something, again, that we've focused a lot of our efforts on uh, more recently. As a lot, date, a lot of geographic data these days has a time stamp, and there seems to be a lot more demand uh, from customers to visualize their data data either in a time series or, or indeed in real time. So we've been looking at various techniques to, to allow us to do this from things such as uh, animated GIFs and videos. And there are more and more tools nowadays to help us do this with, with kind of relative ease. Um, and quite often at the, at the start of a project, um, doing a quick animation on your data is a really good way to help spot trends and patterns. So if you've got a, a database with thousands or even millions of rows of data, um, it's going to be very, very difficult to spot these, these trends. Um, so just by quickly animating your data visually can help us pull out interesting stories and, and if, see if there are any outliers within the data as well. So when you're trying to uncover new insights from a data set, um, it's really important that we continue to ask questions and look at our data from many different angles. So this is, again, sort of a journalistic approach. And we kind of need to act like investigators when we're digging around for clues and insights um, that might be sat within our databases just waiting to be uncovered. So it's important that we, we also challenge people's assumptions um, and make sure that, that we are presenting that data in the most appropriate form and that we always consider the, the audience when we do that. The first version of something is, is very often not the best. Um, so it's important that we iterate on our designs and that we take the time to, to refine our designs. Um, oftenly, things that are seemingly small or subtle changes can actually make a huge difference, massive difference to the way that your visualization is received by the audience. And something that we do within our team, and we also encourage people to do, is to critique your own work. So we offer a checklist um, to help with this, but we feel it's really important to get other people to critique your work as well. Um, as we believe this is an important way to just ensure that you haven't made any any mistakes like spelling mistakes or you haven't put a label in the wrong place um, but it can also be a great way to learn from other people and indeed sort of pass on your own knowledge to others as well over the past uh, year or so we've developed a design framework that we use within our own team and this has really helped us work more efficiently and, and more consistently um, so kind of about, about four months ago we openly publish this um, alongside a bunch of other resources as well. So I'm just going to talk briefly now through our data, uh, GeodataViz toolkit and what, what that contains. So the toolkit um, consists of all these assets and resources that you can see listed on the screen. Um, and uh, along with those, we share links to a wealth of other useful material online as well. So it consists of color palettes, map symbols, visual deconstructions, and visual deconstructions are a way that we can document and share our work. Um, cont contains uh, base maps, so links to where you can use um, ornament survey base maps, but we also share the color values for each of those. Um, we share our cartographic design principles, which Paul has spoken about already this morning, um, cartographic style sheets, and workshops. So I'm just going to go into a little bit more detail about a couple of those aspects. So on the screen are our color palettes, um, which are all colorblind safe. They're all tried and tested. And as you can see, we've created various different schemes uh, for various different data types. So at the top there, if your data is qualitative, then we have a bunch of, of palettes to use um, for those. And we're recommending which pairings of colors are, are most appropriate. We also have a set of map symbols that we release in SVG format. So in a vector format, which you can uh, customize. This is kind of testament to the, the, the value of geo um, at the moment. Um, and in general, we're finding that we're getting more and more requests um, for us to deliver presentations and workshops. Um, so where possible, we're creating our workshop material using open source tools and, and open data 
so that we can release them uh, sort of freely as part of our toolkit. Um, we also ensure that the workbooks are step by step and easy for anybody to follow and use in their own time. Um, we've currently got one workshop available and this is looking at um, different thematic mapping techniques. So the images that you can see on the screen now are taken from that workshop where we take one data set and we look at kind of five or six different techniques for representing that data in different ways. Um, and for that, we use QGIS and Mapbox Studio. Um, but we will be adding more and more workshops as and when we get requests for them. This is the URL where you can find our toolkit and lots of other resources, including the principles which Paul has already spoken about. Uh, if you don't have time to jot down the URL at the moment, then you can just search um, GeodataViz Toolkit in a search engine of your choice. Uh, so just to summarise now, I'll bring this to, to a close before we take any questions. Um, just a few, a few pointers to highlight, really. So small and subtle changes can make a really big difference. So it's absolutely worth spending the time to um, refine your designs. Um, it's worth spending the time to get things right. So refine and iterate. And if in doubt, then just keep it simple and remove clutter to make sure that you're communicating your information as, as effectively and efficiently as possible. And always remember those principles. So with that, we'd just like to thank you very much for, for listening in um, this morning. You can see online you've got our, um, our Twitter, Twitter um, handles, and if there are any now, um, then, we're, then we're more than happy to take them. Okay, so we've got one question that's come in about um, which software uh, do we commonly use and any programming languages. Um, so to start off with that, then uh, I'll say that myself um, and Paul, we're not developers or programmers, um, so we gen generally um, would favor a GUI-based software. So we, we know a little bit of code to get by, uh, but we generally, as I say, we'll we use GUI-based software. Um, so we kind of purposefully, I guess, left um, software out of, of the presentation today. So all our theory and best practice is kind of software agnostic. And that's in part because as Ordnance Survey, we've got to, uh, we have many, many customers using many different softwares. Um, and even internally, we use a whole bunch of different software. And I guess a bit of a cheat's answer to that is to say that it really depends. So you take every job, every project, um, uh, one at a time, and we'll choose the best tool um, that, that fits. But obviously, we do have our preferences. Um, and personally, so my, so the main tools that I'll use day to day are QGIS, um, Adobe Illustrator, uh, and if it's online, then Mapbox Studio um, more often than not. Um, so I don't know, Paul, if you've got any, any additional tools that you want to add to that list? Um, well, I mean, for me, Charlie's right. I mean, we're not coders, um, but we tend to kind of stick to, to software that we know and love. So for me, um, I've got Illustrator and Photoshop on my PC, which I kind of do to use, I use for most of the kind of finishing for our maps or data visualizations. Um, and then in terms of a GIS, for me, it's either QGIS or ArcMap. Um, we're always looking at what other people are using and what other people are doing, because obviously things change all the time. So we're always experimenting with new software and looking for, for new ways to visualize, to visualize the geographical data. Um, more recently, we've been looking at DEC.GL um, and also, um, uh, Tableau is, is something that we're quite keen to have a look at. Um, so that's something that we, we've kind of got on the radar to, to start investigating. But yeah, yeah it, can be, it can be quite varied, but we always look for what, what suits us really.